Okay, this is a Calculus 1 question. In, our, in my class right now, we're working on the early stages of derivatives. So this is a problem, a typical problem that we'll get. So we're given this function f of x equals 1 divided by x minus 3. And we're supposed to find the following. Now we don't have any shortcuts. So the only thing that we can use is the limit definition of the derivative. So considering that we want to find derivatives at points, many students will go to version one of the limit definition and use this formula here. f prime of a, which is a derivative at the point x equal a, limit as h goes to zero, f of a plus h minus f of a all over h, versus version two, which is the derivative function. If I calculate the derivative function, that means I can put in any value I want for x and I can get the derivative at a point. So if I use this formula, I'd have to do this over four times. If I use this formula, I just do it once and I just plug the numbers in. So that's actually the benefit of knowing the derivative function. Right? Now, most likely the trouble my students had with this is the algebra that corresponds with actually doing the limit definition. So let us work down here. <clears throat> so I'm going to start out with using this guy, f prime of x equals the limit as h goes to zero, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Now I see I need f of x plus h, f of x, and h, three pieces of that inside part of my limit. Here I have f of x already, f of x plus h. I'm going to substitute in for x, x plus h. So that's going to be 1 over x plus h minus 3. Now, there's nothing that I can combine down there at the bottom. So I'm just going to think of this as 1 divided by the single quantity x plus h minus 3. And it does help in solving the algebra, simplifying the algebra. Now, <clears throat> at this point in the game, I'm just going to take f of x and f of x plus h and plug them into the formula. All right, so take the limit as h goes to 0 of 1 divided by x plus h minus 3. So that's what f of x plus h is. So I substituted that right in there. Minus f of x, which is 1 over x minus 3. Now I'm going to put everything in parentheses because of that negative sign there in the middle. All over h. Now what typically students should do, or should train themselves to do, is at this point, let's plug in 0 for h and see what happens. Well, immediately when I plug in 0 for h down here, I get something undefined. And now I have to work algebraically to undo that. So I can just stick the 0 in for h and get a real number. So I'm going to actually come over here off to the side a little bit and do the algebra. And then put it back in the formula. So this is our scratch work. So I'm going to simplify just this thing in the brackets. So start with 1 divided by x plus h minus 3 minus 1 over x minus 3 divided by h over 1. Now I always do that because that way I know I have three layers, one, two, or four layers, one, two, three, four, just makes it simpler. Now before I can do any take the reciprocal of the denominator and multiply, I'm going to rewrite the numerator as one fraction. Now between these two denominators, the common denominator is just the product of those two, x plus h minus 3 times x minus 3. So to find a common denominator here, I have to multiply top and bottom here by x minus 3. I have to multiply top and bottom here by x plus h minus 3. So minus 1 times x plus h minus 3. These are not the same numbers because of that h in there, and there's no h here. And then that's over the common denominator, x plus h minus 3 
times x minus 3. Now a really great rule of thumb is, folks, please don't ever multiply out a denominator like that. It just is a waste of your time. Trust me on that. Over a h over 1. Now what I'm going to do is simplify the numerator here a little bit. So I have x minus 3 minus x minus h plus 3 divided by x plus h minus 3, x minus 3. Now is the time I want to take the reciprocal of the denominator and multiply by it. Just leave it, just bring it along. In the numerator we see this lovely, I can get rid of that x with that x, I can get rid of that negative 3 with that positive 3. And so in the numerator I'm left with a negative h. In the denominator I have x plus h minus 3 times x minus 3 times 1 over h. Now I can see that I have an h factored out in the bottom, I have an h by itself in the top. I can sh cancel that h with that h, that leaves a 1 here and a 1 here. Oh, sorry, that leaves a 1 up here and a 1 up here because those h's cancel. So to continue on I can rewrite this guy as minus 1 divided by x plus h minus 3 times x minus 3. All right, now I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to substitute in for this guy. It's a, this is the same statement all the way down, so I'm going to make that substitution. So I'm going to rewrite, since I haven't actually taken a limit, I'm going to write limit as h goes to 0 of minus 1 divided by x plus h minus 3 times x minus 3. Now let's test to see what happens when we let h go to 0. So if I let h be 0 here, that denominator stays defined. In fact, it becomes minus 1 over, this guy goes to 0, x minus 3 times x minus 3, which you can simplify to minus 1 divided by x minus 3 squared. Okay, that's great. So now I know I have my derivative function defined as f prime of x equals minus 1 over x minus 3 squared. Good. Now I can actually just plug in the different values of x to get the derivatives at those points. So if I say f prime of 2, that's going to be minus 1 divided by 2 minus 3 squared. What is that? That's minus 1 over minus 1 squared. This guy in the denominator just becomes positive 1, negative 1 on the top, so my derivative at x equals 2 is negative 1. So what does that mean? That means if I drew the graph of f initially and drew the tangent line, the slope of that tangent line at 2 would be minus 1. All right, let's do one more. Um, f prime of 5. So that means I'm going to take and put 5 in here. So minus 1 divided by 5 minus 3 squared equals minus 1 divided by 2 squared minus 1 over 4. So the slope of the tangent line to the graph of f at x equal 5 is minus 1 quarter. I think students should be able to put in any number, whether it's 4 or 7 or whatever, to be able to calculate the derivative at a point using the derivative function itself as opposed to repeated process of this guy here. Okay, thanks.